Hello, welcome to this demo on solid edge electrical routing. So this is an older demo, but it's quite nice to see it in the latest version. In this demo, we're going to see electrical routing, um, doing some routing, doing some manual wires, um, and doing some semi-automated, and having a look at the outputs we can get out of it. So this is the, um, the bulldozer cab that's been around for a while, quite a nice little data set. Um, we're going to look at the cab lights, so we're going to use the context menu to open that up. And we can see that we've got some wires, um, we've got some cables, etc. already in there. Um, so first thing we need to do is we need to go to our tools tab and go to our electrical routing. This will take us to our electrical routing environment. Notice we've got additional items such as splices now available. If we look at our right click menu we can see we've got additional options on here. So on here I'm going to show wires to make sure that we can go and select the wires and the paths on those. If we don't do that we're not going to be able to do that. We don't need to do any activating since so solid edge 21 and 22 we can now work with all the parts deactivated um, on here. So the first thing we're going to do is have a look at just creating a basic wire um, and then we're going to add that into um, an existing bundle. We'll create our own bundle later on. So what we've got, we've got this light on here, we've got this little connector, we've got a red and a black, and these are going to have to come over to this little kind of switchboard on here. We can see we've got our switchboard on here and we can see we've got our different lights, so we're going to use this one as our, um, as, as this one on here. So similar to normal modeling, ordered modeling, we can create a path externally or we can create it similar to a sketch and a profile. So for this one I'm going to choose wire and then I'm going to do this as create path. So it's going to go and create a path that's linked to this wire. If we had any, if we did that, if we had a path that we created externally, we could have used the existing path command. So what we're going to do, we're going to choose the create path command. This is going to be our main thing that we're going to be changing on here. We're going to be changing our locate filter and we're going to select on there. So if I zoom in, if I select on the left, that's going to be the start, that dot there. If I select here, that's going to be the start. If I do select it the wrong way, which I haven't, I can use the F key on the fleet keyboard to flip it and that's going to flip the direction that goes. Uh, but it's always nice to kind of get it in the correct orientation on there. I'm using a 3D connection mouse, so you will see minor graphics issues as that makes the, the change on there. So we're going to place that and then right click to finish on there. And then we can go and choose the type of wire we want. So for these ones we're going to do a 16 gauge stranded and it's going to be copper red on there. We can also go into the properties um, and change any settings if we need to, but I'm going to leave that as it is for now. We will have a look at this later. If this does go the wrong way, this is the point where we would be able to go and, uh, once we've done the preview, actually we would be able to go and make a change to this if we had to but we're not going to have to in this instance on there. So this just creates a representation of the wire. If we click on the wire and use our context menu, we can create that as a physical conductor if we need to. Um, but in this instance, we don't, we don't really need to, but it's nice to see what that looks like. So let's go and quickly create the other one. We're going we're gonna to use the, um, the same, same steps as we did before. We're going to go from there and uh, go to this upper hole on here and finish on that. And then the properties, I'm just going to go and choose the, the black version of the same wire. Notice it goes to the same location, so it's easy if we're doing a lot of wires of the same type um, on there. And then I'm going to go and create that physical. I'm creating this physical just so we can see when we, when we make a change, what solid edge will do. It, it will hide these physicals when we make certain changes, um, just to make our graphics performance better on here. Because it's like we are creating a lot of sweeps on there, so graphically we are going to be pushing our cards, um, our graphics cards, if we're doing a lot of this. So next we need to kind of bundle this into here. So you'll find that each of these sections have got a path you can see it in the centre on there. So we want to kind of bundle this along the path on there. So if we create a bundle it's not going to create anything like, a, like an outside sheath. If we do a cable it's going to prompt us for that. So I'm just going to use the bundle command to allow this to go on there. We're going to select the connectors where we want to kind of start bundling from. So we want to kind of take these down there. So we need to make sure we select them near this end. And then for our path step, we've got an existing path this time. So we're going to choose existing path. And we're going to select on these sections that we're going to bundle along. It's almost like I want to go along there, along there, and then along there, and then along there, and then along there. So we select those appropriate paths on there. Once we've done that, we can accept. And obviously we can see we've got none because we've, got our, we've already got our cables there. So we don't need to do that. And that's then going to go and route those items. 
you'll find it looks nice on this end yeah we've got no problems on there but if we look on this end you'll see that we've got some quite tight options on there um, quite tight bends on that cable if we click on the cable if it was going against the bend radius it would tell us but you'll, um, we can see that we haven't actually got anything defining what that bend radius should be so what we can do is if we go into our cables I'm going to choose a red one first and we choose this edit definition dialog box and go to our properties we can then go to the properties on here and we can see our bend radius is 1.3 for a 2.12 cable doesn't really make sense I'd want I'd expect this to be somewhere two three four times the diameter so I'm going to go and select that as eight on here and then select OK on that I then click the preview and finish if we now click on that we see that pop up straight away we've got that issue on there so what we can do on that we can edit the path um, as we've got like a couple of paths on there it's going to give us a choice of which one we want we want that first one on there and then what we can do it we can do a few different things um, but for this one our end conditions are controlled by those so we can't really do our end condition step we've got one that side but we haven't this side so what we're going to do we're going to do our select point step and I'm going to use my view cube to have a look at top view and then zoom back in on that area and I'm going to press and hold the alt key and this is going to allow me to create additional points on here I can then press and hold the left mouse button to go and drag these to get the kind of shape that I want on here obviously we do have to be careful that we're not putting this wire somewhere where it can't go these might be in a tight channel so we might not be able to do this so obviously just kind of be careful with that on there while we're editing this uh, we can actually just click on another wire and go to there without without uh, without fully exiting that command um, uh, we can we can go into that we'll, we'll see that in a little bit more detail in a minute okay so if we go to that path step on there um, you can see we've got that on there so let's go to that one edit path edit uh, back to select point steps select alt and add a couple of key points on there just go I want that first one like that and then I want the second one um, there just, I just kind of, kind of want to make it so it follows the other one nicely on there. Okay, that's looking much better there. Okay, so next um, we're going to have a look at creating a, a little splice into here um, from the other light that we've got. I'm just going to use a configuration to get rid of this light on there so that's out of our way. Okay, so let's just make sure we've got nothing selected on here. So we've got our splice command here. Um, and this allows us to go and choose what we want to kind of splice into um, so we want to splice to that area we can we can use our quick pick and we can see what we're going to go and splice into um, so really I want to kind of splice into um, that wire because that's the, the red one and then I want to go and select that point as the splice point I can also go and define the splice so I kind of want this splice to be quite visible so I'm going to set that as a 5 mil. so that's going to give me like a, a 5 mil sphere um, <laughs> For us to splice into. So if I go to the wire command, okay, so we're going to create our wire. So this one over here, we're going to use the same locate filter as we had on there. That's not a problem, we can click on there. But when we go to a splice, we need to change this to the endpoint option. Um, so these are going to be our most common ones with center point if you're connecting to the center of a metal clip or like a rectangular section okay so once we've done that we can then go and choose the point that we want to go to um, so we've got the um, the the different options um, that we want to go and connect to so uh, I'm actually just going to connect to the end of that path on there and then right click and then we can go and choose the the wire that we want so we've done it was a 16 gauge stranded copper red before so we'll stick with that on there and then we'll finish that on there Okay, another thing we can do with these wires is uh, we can actually go and set a, a length of this wire. So um, if we go into our, um, sorry, let me just let me just go back into that. So if we go into our path step on there, we've got this option for a curve length step. Um, a curve a, a, a curve needs a third point. So we haven't got a third point at the moment. So if I click fix length, it's going to come with an error. It's going to tell me we can't do it because we haven't got this point. But if I just ignore that, and I click back on this box and I type 425 in there that's going to go and add that point for me automatically so that's going to give that item like an adjustment on there 
Okay, so next we're going to do a little bit of tidying up here. So we've got this um, cable that we've now transferred some P-clips in. So we need to go and run this along there and go and tidy this up on there. So for this we've got a root command. So for this we can choose a root command. Um, I'm going to spin it around to this view just to make it a little bit easier. We can choose what we want to root and then we can hover over what we want to what, uh, what we want to root this. So let's just choose a root command first. So that's the path and then we want to go through there. Um, if it goes the wrong way we can use the F key and that will allow that to flip in the correct direction on there. And that will stay active. And then we can root that on there. We can also, any of these kind of blue dots, so we've got the blue dot command on here, this is on the end of here, we can choose that, we can choose the edit, and we can then use this little triad, so, it's, so lock it to the plane, and then use that to go and drag that to the correct orientation, and that wire is then going to update nicely for us on there. Okay, so the last little thing we're going to have a look at um, is we've got these two connectors here, and we've got three connectors up here that we're going to connect um, about 10 wires up um, on. So how do we do this with a bit of kind of intelligence automation? If we just jump into this part, we can see that this part can have values assigned to it. If we go to our tools tab, there's an icon here called assign terminals. This will show us our component name, our library part name, and each of the terminals. You can see we've got the numbers for each of those terminals. So we can have a document that will say this component terminal 1 will go to this component terminal 2, etc. on there. So if we just save and close that one. Okay, so let's have a look at this then. So we've got those five items that we want to connect up and we want to run a cable through there. So for this we're going to use our harness wizard. Here we can bring in data from all sorts of different different systems. Um, so if I if I choose promise E, that will probably work this data. But for this, I'm going to choose just um, what we uh, what I'm going to class as kind of um, legacy data on there. Um, so um, let's just try promise E. See see what see what that comes up with. So let's go to um, where these files are going to be. So we've got a, a CMP which is our component and our CON which is our connectors, our wires. So our first one is going to be our component. And then our second one is going to be our connectors. If that likes it, we're going to get a dialog box. If it doesn't like it, it's not going to like it at all. So this one's actually working on here. So we find a lot, a lot of the data output is very similar. So Solid Edge will actually go and read it. So we've got these components, um, and these are not populated. We've just been into that one, so we know which one that one is. It's that little nine one. So we can choose a little option on here, assign occurrence click on that component and we're done. These connectors, um, so on here, we've got these two on here, we've got a three and we've got a two, so that's going to be these two. So if I click on that one and I go and assign that one to the two, and then that one is going to be assigned to the three. And then we go down the bottom, I can see one I got with 12, so that's going to be this one. And then that one's the remaining item, it doesn't quite match, but we're going to go with that. Um, looks like it should be six, but there's only four. Um, which is next. We've got no orange, which is great. That means that we can see we, it's going to create these wires, um, and it's going to go component terminals two. So we've got our from and our two for each of those, and they're defined. And the information provided in the file has mapped into Solid Edge correctly. So we've got the um, the one that's in the description and the one that's in Solid Edge has come across exactly on there. If these didn't match, we would be able to choose these as a drop down and select the ones to go and match those up at this point. Um, okay, so if there was nothing, if it was just cable one, you can then go and choose each one and you should know what that is from what you've done. Once you finish that, it's going to go and create those wires, similar to when we created the wires over here before we rooted them. Um, and just double check those are all there, they look good. So next we're going to kind of route these through here, but we're going to route it and we're going to create a cable at the same time. The cable and bundle work the same way. So for here we're going to select our conductors. So we're going to do a fence select using the directional fence that we've got within Solid Edge. And we're going to accept that. And then path step, we're going to have to create a new path on here. So that's fine. We're in the path command on here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my locate filter. Um, the path, when we create it, if we create a key point in the middle of nowhere, it's going to be linked to our coordinate system. 
So if I go and turn on my coordinate system on here, we can see our coordinate system's over here. I don't want to create it this way because it's going to create over there. At least if I do XZ plane, it's going to be close. So I'm going to I'm going to create my first point um, using that as a bit of a guide. So I'm going to come up halfway between there and the P clip, or about a third of the way up even. And then I'm going to change the locate filter, and I'm going to select cylindrical. And then I can go and select these cylindrical faces. As long as I select the start of the face, it's going to go in through that through that end, so I don't have to worry about using the F key on there to get that. So just kind of go near the end where you want it to go in. And to end it, I'm going to change that back to an endpoint on there. I'm going to use my view cube to get a nice, accurate location on there. And then accept on there. We can go and choose the, the, uh, the type of wire we want. So I'm going to go with a 10 gauge in grey. And that's then going to go and route that on there. And that's looking good. Apart from this down here. So we know we, we can go and modify this easily with that option on there. So I'm just going to make sure it locks to there. And take that onto there. That's looking good. Let's escape out of there. These two wires need a slight modification. So for these I can edit the path. I can choose the path that I want. And then I can go and make a change on here with this little kind of what I call a magnitude slider on there. You'll find what you can actually do is click on the other one at the same point without actually exiting the command. Go make a change to that path at the same time. Doesn't matter which path you're in when you're in the edit command, it will allow you to edit whatever path you've highlighted on there. Okay, so we've got several options we want to have a look at on there. So if we go to on here and we go create physical conductor, that's going to create all of those at the same time. And we've got a nice physical. Um, normally we do get a little bit of clash between the wires, but in reality that's not going to be a problem. Okay, so that's all wired up nicely. But we want some output from here. Um, we're not just going to use this, we want to see what we've got. So if we stay in our electrical routine and go to the tools, we've got the option for a harness report. This is going to give us some useful information. So we can choose to use, um, we, uh, we could select certain items. So if I come into cables, so let's cancel that. If I come into cables and I select the, the cable, if I expand that and then select all of the wires as well, um, when I then choose harness report, um, I can choose the currently selected and that's going to show just those items. So once I've selected that, it's just going to show those wires and obviously that cable, um, which we've got in there as well. Or we can do a full report, which is probably the one that we're going to want to want to do. We can do a harness bomb. We can choose the format and choose any kind of items that we want. So any information we need to bring.